Hi everyone, thanks for joining us with the Midwest Arts Council. Today we are painting a rainbow and St. Patrick's Day painting. First of all, we're gonna go over the supplies that we're gonna to need today. The first thing that we need is a canvas. This canvas here is eight inches by 10 inches, um, but you can use whichever size you'd like. The next thing that we're gonna need are paint brushes. I have two different sizes here, kind of a, uh, a larger square uh, paintbrush and then a smaller square paintbrush. Um, we also are gonna need some paint colors. We have blue, we have green, and then we have red, yellow, purple, white, and black are the paint colors that we're gonna need today. The next thing that we're gonna need is a stencil to draw on the shape of the rainbow and the hills. If you don't have a stencil, you can just draw the shapes on your canvas with just a regular pencil. Other supplies that you might need are paper towels, as well as a glass of water for cleaning your paintbrush. And then lastly, if you're doing this on a nice table that you don't wanna get dirty, it's good to have an old flyer or newspaper to put underneath your canvas so you don't get the table dirty. All right, so let's get started. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is take our stencil and put it onto the canvas, or we're gonna draw the arch for the rainbow, uh, about a centimeter or a little less from the top. And then this part, you want it to be fairly flat. So kind of the same, uh, it kind of lines up with the bottom of the canvas. And then this part is a little bit lower. So first we're gonna trace that really quickly. And then we're gonna trace um, these again and we're gonna make hills. It's okay for the first curve to overlap with the rainbow a little bit. So we're just gonna make that first curve. And then, and it, you can make this whichever angle you want your, your hills in the background. I'm gonna make the second one kind of like this. All right, so now we have the arch for our rainbow. Um, and then two hills. Now I did leave a little space because I do want to make a little cloud here. All right, so we're gonna get painting. And I guess feel free to pause this video at any point. We are gonna pause it a few times to allow the paint to dry. But we are first going to take this light blue color and we are going to paint all around the rainbow and in this area, but we're not gonna paint the hills and we're not gonna paint in this rainbow part. So we're just gonna fill it in as carefully as we can. And using enough paint that there aren't any white spots. Like if I go really quick, there's kind of these white spots. We wanna try to fill those in as carefully as possible. All right, and then go ahead and paint all your edges. And then we'll move right on to the next step. All right, now we are going to clean our brush in our water. 
So once that's clean, we're gonna take a paper towel and we're just gonna wipe that brush off and get rid of the rest of the paint. If we didn't clean it good enough, we could also clean it in the sink. All right, so now we are going to paint the hill. So we're gonna grab our green paint and we are going to paint the hills. It doesn't really matter which one you start with, but I'm gonna start with this one over here. I didn't let the blue paint dry too much in between um, because green is made of blue, so it's, it's easier to cover blue with green because there's already blue in green. If you want a darker green, this might take a couple coats, but I'm just gonna do one coat and then again, we can do the edges. Okay, so once I'm happy with this hill, I'm gonna go on to the second hill. All right, and you can go ahead and paint the edges once you're done. All right, now we are going to wash the green out of our paintbrush just in the water. Once our paintbrush is clean, we can take that paper towel again and wipe it clean um, or dry. At the very end, we'll do a, a thorough job washing our paintbrushes. So now we're gonna leave the, the painting to dry just for a little bit. Um, and then we'll move on to the next step. So the next step, we're actually going to paint the clouds. Um, and then this will be another cloud or we're gonna make it into a pot of gold if you'd like. So we're gonna use the white um, and we're gonna open that up. And then we're gonna use this square paintbrush. Now we're gonna make a couple circles. You don't have to do it this way, but I find it the easiest. So I'm gonna dip it in um, to the white, not too much paint on there. And then I'm gonna make a couple circles. So I'm gonna start at the top here and I'm gonna keep the one side of my paintbrush down and then I'm gonna rotate the rest of the paintbrush um, without lifting the one corner. So keep one corner in the middle and then rotate the outer edge of your paintbrush and it makes a little circle. And so we're gonna make a bunch of those. So we're gonna make another one. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So maybe four on this side, maybe one in the middle here. And then we're going to make maybe four or five on the bottom here. Kind of make it cloud shaped as best as we can. And we can always go um, over it again after. Um, and I'm just trying to paint some of the blue off to cover up that blue a little bit, but I'll probably go over it a second time at the end. Um, now the other one, very similar, it's going to be gold coins or if you want another cloud that's okay too and we're just going to do the same thing over here. So again, we're going to keep the paintbrush, the middle um, of the paintbrush flat um, and then we just rotate the outer edge around it. If you don't like this method, you can just kind of paint little bounces if you'd like to get those coins. I just find this the easiest option. Once we're done with those clouds, um, we can wash out the white out of our paintbrush. So we can go ahead and do that now. Once the paintbrush is clean, I just take a paper towel and dry that paintbrush off a little bit. 
All right, so now we are actually gonna paint the rainbow part of our painting. So rainbows happen actually when it's raining in one part of the sky and sunny in the other, and they're made when the sunlight shines through the water droplets and the light is bent and reflected into colors. There are actually seven colors in a rainbow, and so we are gonna start with red. Well, I guess usually there's red and then orange, yellow. Um, then we're gonna do green and then blue. The next color is called indigo, which is kind of a purple blue color, which we will be doing today. Uh, it's kind of this one here. It's hard to tell, it looks almost black there. Um, and then the last color is called violet, which is more of a pinky purple color, um, which we're not gonna do today. So we are going to start with red. So we're gonna open that up and we're actually gonna use the smaller paintbrush. And so we are going to use the red and we're gonna try to keep the red about the thickness of the paintbrush when we press down. Um, and we're gonna start on the outer edge, so the top part, and we're gonna paint that red. Um, and we're just gonna try to keep it as, as a, kind of the same width of the paintbrush when we paint. And we're going along that upper curve of our rainbow. as straight as possible. Now the next color is a lighter color, so what I would recommend is to let the red dry a little bit. Um, if you had extra red left over, you could try mixing it with the yellow to make an orange, but we're actually gonna skip the orange today. So now we are going to clean out our paintbrush. Once your paintbrush is clean, you can just dry it off with that paper towel again. So once your red is kind of dry, maybe give it five minutes or so, you can move on to the next color. Again, we're skipping orange today, um, but we're gonna use yellow. So we will do the exact same thing and keeping it about the same width of the uh, paintbrush. And I did use the smaller paintbrush here. You could use the bigger one if you wanted, um, but we're gonna paint another curve. So if you have some bleeding of the red into the yellow here, you can always do a second coat later on if you think you need. Once you're done with your yellow stripe, you can wash off your paintbrush again. Once your paintbrush is washed, you can dry it off in that paper towel. The next color that we're gonna paint is green. So we can close up that yellow and pull out that green again. So we're gonna do the exact same thing and paint a green stripe as thick as that paintbrush. So just like I said before, how there's blue and green, there's actually also yellow and green. So green is made up of yellow and blue, and so if the yellow and blue combine, a, or yellow and green combine a little bit, it works out okay because green actually already has yellow in it. Once we are done with our green, we can put the lid on our green paint again and then wash our paintbrush off. 
Once the paintbrush is washed, we can dry it off again and then move on to the next color. So the next color that we have is blue. So we do the exact same thing. Once we are done with our blue stripe, we can wash our paintbrush off again. And then once this is completely washed off, we can clean or dry that brush off again. The next color and the last color of the rainbow that we're gonna do is purple. Once the purple is open, we would do the very last stripe here and we can kind of fill in whatever space is left. as evenly as possible, but may not be exactly the same. Now, an interesting thing about rainbows is because it's still kind of winter outside, rainbows don't really happen in the winter um, because raindrops freeze into snowflakes and do not reflect light into colors. But here in Manitoba, when it's really, really cold, like from December to February, like minus 40 weather that we sometimes get, um, we get ice crystals forming in the air and then the light near the sun reflect uh, through those ice crystals and form a little rainbow kind of around the sun. You may have seen it before. Those types of rainbows in, in the really cold wintry months, those rainbows around the sun are called sun dogs. So it's kind of a special thing that happens here in Manitoba. It's our own kind of winter rainbow that we get. You might not be able to see all the colors of the rainbow, but you definitely kind of see this reflection of colors around the sun. Not that you should look right at the sun, but um, it is kind of a, a neat thing that happens here. All right, so once you're happy with your rainbow, you can go ahead and wash your brush. And then once your brush is washed, you can dry it off one more time. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna switch back to our slightly bigger square brush. And then I guess if you wanted to leave it as a rainbow, you could leave it here, but we are going to make it a kind of a St. Patrick's Day painting. So we're gonna make this into a pot of gold. So um, with your square brush, we are going to use yellow. Now the reason why we're doing a rainbow with a pot of gold is because there's a kind of a St. Patrick's Day Irish legend that says there's a pot of gold at the end of every rainbow and it's guarded by a mythical creature called a leprechaun. So it's kind of a, a fun way to make a St. Patrick's Day painting is put the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So we can wait until all of our paints are dry, which we probably should, but we are gonna paint this cloud into coins and it, this one's gonna stay as a normal cloud. So we're gonna open up the yellow paint and then we're gonna dip that bigger paintbrush in and we're gonna do the same thing where the one corner stays put and the other side of the paintbrush will turn around in a circle. So we're gonna make a little gold coin. Overlapped with the blue a little bit there, but I think it's gonna be okay. And we're gonna make another gold coin. And another gold coin. We're just gonna fill it in with coins. I don't know about you, but I've never really seen the end of a rainbow. So uh, it'd be pretty special to find the end of a rainbow, though I don't know how likely you would be to find a pot of gold. 
So once that cloud seems filled into your liking with gold coins, we can wash our paintbrush. Once that paintbrush is nice and clean, we can dry it off again. And then we are going to move on to making the pot of the pot of gold. So we're gonna use the little bit of black that we have here. And we are going, it's okay to paint a little bit over top of your gold coins, but we're gonna do a straight line across. If you want, you can even make these edges a little bit curved. Straight across. And then we're gonna move about a centimeter in on each side. So you can make like a little line. And then after we make those two lines on each side, we're gonna make it like a big pot. So we kind of have this shape here. Once you have the shape that you kind of like, you can fill it all in with some black. Okay, so we can wash our paintbrush out. Once that paintbrush is clean again, we can dry it off. And then we're actually going to do a second coat on these clouds. So we're gonna grab the white again. And we're gonna do another group of circles to get these clouds looking nice and white and fluffy. So again, with the middle of the, one side of the paintbrush right in the middle, um, you kind of drag the paintbrush in a circle and it makes that kind of you know, perfect circle. It's okay to press down a little bit too when you do that. You won't damage the paintbrush. And I'm going to do a couple up here. I just find this makes the clouds look nice and fluffy. And one more over here. Let me fix this one a little bit. I want that a little bigger. All right, so if we kind of feel like that's cloud-like enough, we can wash our paintbrushes off. And then again, I just dry the paintbrush off so it's not too wet. Um, now, I guess I didn't say, because we do need to let this dry maybe a little bit longer. Um, St. Patrick's Day is actually an Irish cultural celebration that happens each year on March 17th. And it recognizes an Irish saint called St. Patrick. Um, the color green, pots of gold, shamrocks, and leprechauns are often associated with this celebration. So the next thing we're actually going to paint is a shamrock or a three-leaf clover, which is actually a symbol of Ireland. Um, so it kind of goes with their St. Patrick's Day theme. So what we're gonna do with that is we are going to use our green again. Now this is the same color green as the green on here. So if you wanna make it a little bit darker, we can add a darker color like black to our green to make it slightly darker than the one we have. So how to do that is we grab a tiny bit of black, not very much, just like a the tip of your paintbrush. Um, and then we mix it into the green until we have a darker green that we like. So I think I like that green that we have. Um, and to make the three leaf clover, we're gonna do the same method as the clouds and the gold coins, and we're gonna do a couple clovers on our painting. So to do that, we start with one bigger circle, or well, not big circle, but one circle to make the top of the three leaf clover or shamrock. 
might hopefully it's okay to see it's a little bit of a darker green and we can always make it a little darker if you'd like then we move on a little bit more um, kind of not quite a centimeter over that's gonna be the middle um, and we do this second leaf and then we would make our third leaf of our three leaf clover so there's our clover now when they're out in the wild, they have a little stem, so you can make a little stem if you'd like by just kind of drawing a, a line down. You could probably use your skinny paintbrush to do that if you'd like to make it a little bit more um, perfect. So then we're gonna paint a couple more. So we're gonna do another circle. Move over a little bit more and paint another circle. And then a third circle. So this time I might use my smaller paintbrush and dip it into that darker green and draw a line. So it's just a bit of a skinnier line. And then we're gonna do one more three leaf clover or shamrock over here. of this painting is we're actually going to do a four leaf clover on our pot of gold because it's very lucky to find a pot of gold or very lucky to find the end of a rainbow. Um, so a four leaf clover actually means good luck as they're very rare and hard to find. It is said that for the four leaves of a four leaf clover represent faith, hope, love, and the last one luck. So this one's a little bit different. We're not gonna put one straight in the middle. We're kind of gonna do one off to the side. Same idea, just that circle. And then another circle. And another one. This one might need a couple coats. That black shines right through. And then the stem. So if you wanna do another coat with that, you can let it dry and then do a second coat of the green. So something else I ended up doing here is darkening the blue stripe in the rainbow. I found it, the blue and the rainbow match the sky too closely. So what I did is I took that light blue and added a little drop of purple, just like we did with the black and the green, uh, to darken the blue. And then I, I painted that blue stripe so that it was darker than the, the light blue from the sky. Once you are happy with the way your painting is, and you can go in and fix it however you would like, but once you're done, you can go ahead and wash your paintbrush. Now this water is pretty murky, so what I would recommend is if once you're done with your painting and your paintbrushes, just to keep the paintbrushes kind of safe, I would wash it again in clean water, even with a little soap might not hurt, um, just to keep the, the paintbrushes as nice as possible for as long as possible. So that is the end of our painting. This is the uh, rainbow pot of gold St. Patrick's Day uh, with a couple of four, uh, shamrocks and a four leaf clover. We learned a little bit about rainbows and St. Patrick's Day today, as well as painted this painting. We hope you enjoyed painting with us with the Midwest Arts Council and the Safe at Home Manitoba program. Thank you so much.